But yes, let's go over everything that I can think of that happened at Star Wars Celebration. First off, we got three new Star Wars movies coming out, which is kind of crazy. Well, I guess this is if they actually get made, which who knows if that'll happen. First off is James Mangold's movie, who directed Logan and the upcoming Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. It is set at the dawn and they said the birth of the Jedi and the Force, which is going to be crazy because one is described as a biblical epic by uh, the director and he kind of compared it to the Ten Commandments and it's set 25,000 years before anything on the current timeline, which is perfect. Finally, they're like, wait, so if we just kind of avoid any of the current canon we have, we can kind of do whatever we want. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's do that. Instead of trying to have to waggle, waggle, wiggle my way through the current canon and make sure everything lines up. That's the, that's the smartest thing to do. Just kind of distance yourself from all of it. But I think the most anticipated of the three movies is Dave Filoni's movie, which is going to close out the kind of interconnected plot lines of the shows we've been getting that have been going over the Imperial Remnant and the New Republic supposedly going to be a big meetup and draws on legends and eu i'm assuming kind of heir to the empire which i'm kind of assuming is what ahsoka is going to kind of either set up or be maybe but apparently we're going to have to wait six to seven years until that comes out so that's going to be rough that might be like out at like 2030 which seems crazy to say because 2030 seems so far away <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly for the three Star Wars movies Charmin oh I'm gonna butcher this name I should have looked this up before Charmin Obide Chinois movie that's what I'm gonna go with um but they directed Miss Marvel which is good or bad however he felt about Miss Mar Marvel and this is gonna be set 15 years after the rise of Skywalker and it's gonna be Rey building a new Jedi order which a lot of people are kind of upset about because people who don't like sequels don't want this to continue. And also people who like me are fine with the sequels, but would also prefer this to just happen with what the sequels were supposed to be. Luke training a new Jedi Order and then could have focused on Rey. It is what it is, but we're here now. So I do like that they're adding more stuff to expand past the sequels. Then the script will be getting to Kathleen Kennedy in like a month and a half, supposedly by Stephen Knight, who I haven't looked up anything. Let's look it up. Let's look up Stephen Knight. Let's see what he wrote on Peaky Blinders. OK, and then a bunch of other stuff that I don't know about. Cool. Sure. I mean, as long as it's a good script, I don't care who writes it. <laughs> But supposedly we could be seeing some characters come back. But also, Grogu will be 91 years old around this time. So, I think it's very likely that we could see Grogu in this movie. Or at least reference Grogu. Because Yoda started training younglings when he was 100 years old. So he was doing that for 800 years. So by the time Grogu is 91, I think he should be able to do that. Because at the beginning of Mandalorian, I think they said that he was 50 years old. So, but also maybe his development is stunted by getting captured or whatever happened to Grogu. I don't, I don't know. I don't think anyone really knows. Um, but after the period of him getting uh, taken away by, what's his face? Keller and Beck. There we go. That's what I was thinking of. Um, but apparently they've been working on it for quite a while. And I think when they said that they even meant a couple of years. So that's crazy. But yeah, three new Star Wars movies. There have been many movies announced before that have not seen the light of day. So I'm hoping all three of these happen. And I think these are the three most likely to happen, honestly, of everything that we've gotten. Admittedly, maybe of these three, James Mangold's probably less so because it's not really related to anything that we currently have. So I think of these three, if only two were to actually see the light of day, it'd be Dave Filoni's and then Charmin's. But we have a lot of informa information, rather, about current shows that we know are coming out because we've seen footage <laughs> like Ahsoka. We got a new poster seen here and then a trailer, which if you're watching on YouTube live, only got one person watching live. But if you're watching this, I have a reaction out. So check that out. Cool. But Ahsoka is coming August of this year, 
which is fantastic to see. Um, but there are two people we see in it that I don't really know much about. Shin and then Balin. I've seen I've seen his name pr not pronounced spelled like three different ways, but this is what I'm going with. Balin Skull, and they both had orange lightsabers. I thought that was badass. And it appears that Shin has a Padawan braid. If you kind of stop at a part in the trailer where she's uh, flying a fighter. But from what we've seen in the trailer, I'm assuming because it looks like Ahsoka fights Balin maybe in the world between worlds with like the background going on. I'm not 100% sure. And the orange sabers were intentional and to make us question if they're good or bad. Uh, and Dave Filoni confirmed that. Um, and then there is a scene we get with Thrawn and there's like some mountains in the background. So maybe he's on Tantus and maybe that's what relates to the Bad Batch. And then that's how it's going to relate to Dave Filoni's movie. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a stretch from all this. But I think the best part is that Dave consulted with Timothy Zahn on Thrawn. And we get Lars Mikkelsen back as Thrawn, which if you don't know, he voiced Thrawn in Rebels. And his voice is so menacing. It is beautiful. Um, there was footage that was shown at Celebration that kind of leaked a little bit, but it shows Sabine wielding a green lightsaber. I wasn't going to talk about this because this could have been seen as spoilers, but I think it's just going to be Ezra's lightsaber, so I don't think that's too spoilery. Um, and I, from the footage, it looks like it's the eighth brother that uh, Ahsoka faces um, in like those like shipping yards or I'm not really sure what that area is. Um, but it's like the one Inquisitor, or at, at least what I'm assuming to be an Inquisitor that Ahsoka faces in the trailer. David Tennant will be back as Hu Yang, I believe is how you pronounce it, uh, but it's the droid from the Clone Wars who taught the younglings uh, how to construct their lightsaber. Uh, Ahsoka was in on a couple of those episodes, and then they had to like fight to get away from Hondo and stuff like that. Kevin Kiner uh, is back to compose Ahsoka, who he, he composed Rebels and Clone Wars. And then Morgan Elspeth, I was kind of surprised to see her in the trailer. Uh, she's back and I don't know how she got away from Ahsoka or whoever Ahsoka gave her to. Maybe Ahsoka just kind of threatened to get information then left her. That's probably more likely. Um, but she's very loyal to Thrawn. Um, eight episodes, which kind of sucks. I was hoping for like more because the eight, the eight episodes in Mandalorian. I don't know how I feel, but maybe it's just their use of the eight episodes, like episode six. Episode 6, this past episode that came out, would have been fine if it wasn't the third to last episode of the season. But then at the same time, Bad Batch, which is 16, feels like a little too much, but also gives them room to kind of do those like more just fun, random episodes like Mandalorian chapter or not chapter episode 6 could have been. But supposedly same length of Mandalorian episodes, if not longer, I would like them to be a little bit longer or at least consistently longer. Whereas like Mandalorian can go from like 33 minutes to 50 minutes. That's a big time jump from episode to episode. There is, sorry for that, cat hair on my mic. But that's basically everything that we learned from Ahsoka, I think. So we're going to move on to the Acolyte, which we got a new logo for. Which, I think I like the old logo better, but this logo also looks pretty fantastic. I don't know what's going on with this O. There's something going on here, and I wonder if it has any relation to the show or if they just think it looks cool. <laughs> but supposedly this is coming uh, 2024, which sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, but we'll see many Jedi wielding lightsabers, including a Nemoidian, and we're going to be seeing a yellow saber, which is cool. Because the only time we've seen that is very end of Rise of Skywalker when Rey lights up her lightsaber. And I will say, like, Rise of Skywalker is maybe my least favorite Star Wars movie, but... My saber just looks so good at the end. It just looks so cool. They will finish filming in May and it's supposedly inspired by Kurosawa films like Hidden Fortress, much like the original Star Wars films. Set in the High Republic, fantastic. Love that we're going to get some Star Wars that's not in this like 50 year period in prequels and OT trilogy. <laughs> uh, but it was pitched as Frozen meets Kill Bill, which I don't, I don't know what that means. But it sounds cool. <laughs> um, but oof, I don't know how to say it. this guy's name. This guy's name too. Uh, Junus uh, Suotamo. Sorry, dude. I absolutely butchered your name. Um, but he's back to play a Wookiee, uh, and this time has a Jedi named Kelnaka. 
and this show is going to be from the perspective of villains, which we all kind of figured. Um, but we got a couple of characters in here that will be using lightsabers, going to be dark side users, I'm assuming. And then we would have seen the first footage of Acolyte shown if you were at Celebration, which I was not. <laughs> we heard how Leslie uh, Headland, Headland, not sure how to say her last name, uh, praised the authors of the High Republic. And I don't have this on here, but she said that Star Wars saved her life. So I'm assuming with all that kind of in her her background she's going to really bring her a game to this show which i'm really excited for uh and we will see uh rebecca henderson who i don't really know uh let's see who she is before i continue on but she will be playing vernestra rowe um which if you haven't read any of the high republic novels vernestra rowe is a a big character in a couple of the novels um they are in things that i have not watched all right Cool. Um, oh, I do have it. It's right there. And then she said she loves prequels and Clone Wars. And I feel like with all the people who grew up on prequels and Clone Wars, they're going to love to hear that, which is cool to see. Cool to hear. Looking forward to it. And then Skeleton Crew, which I will say going back to Acolyte. Acolyte might be one of my one of the shows I'm most hyped about that I know very little about. I <laughs> uh, found out at Celebration that Jude Law will play a Jedi, which I don't think was confirmed or even brought up beforehand. Um, but he's going to be a Jedi along with a, basically a bunch of children from what it seems like. Uh, and then one of the crew is going to be the same species as Max Rebo, which is just absolutely awesome. <laughs> Dave Filoni also described the series as a story about a group of kids in Star Wars Galaxy go on an adventure that is more than they can handle, which I think this will be definitely one of the series that is a little bit more kid friendly that is live action, but I think with kind of what's going on in this time period, it'll be very interesting to see how they go about it because it is set during the Mando era of shows. And apparently it's similar to Goonies, which <laughs> it'll be interesting to see Goonies in Star Wars. And then here's a list of some of the directors that will be, whoops. No, go back. There we go. That will be in um, the show directing some episodes. And then the first trailer was shown at uh, Celebration, which of course we don't get because we don't get anything because we're not there. <laughs> and then it's currently in post-production. It will come out 2024. So moving on, and or season two. The rest of this stuff isn't a whole bunch of information like we've had for these previous shows that I've been talking about. Uh, it's halfway through filming and it's going to wrap up in August and will come out fall of next year. And I think most importantly, Andy Serkis will be back as Kino Loy, which I am so happy about because that episode was so good. One way out, baby. One way out. Oh my god, that was that was probably one of the best episodes of the season, if not the best episode, honestly. And a teaser trailer was shown at Celebration that we, of course, didn't get. Bad Batch Season 3, we got some information about with that it's going to be the last season of Bad Batch, and it's coming next year. Fennec Shane will be back, Commander Wolf will make an appearance, and Celebration saw a trailer. You know, you know how great it would be if they just released all these trailers that were specific to Celebration to, like, Disney Plus? So then everyone can watch them, and then they also get traffic to their website? Please? Please? Vision Season 2, which I recorded my reaction to the trailer earlier, will feature 9 shorts coming out May 4th. And I just watched it, and oof, it looks so good. It looks so good. Tales of the Jedi, we're getting a season two, and basically all I have is that Dave just saw people have fun making Bad Batch, so he wanted to make Tales of the Jedi. <laughs> I don't know who they're going to bring up in Tales of the Jedi, but Tales of the Jedi was fantastic, and I want to see more of it. Um, now we're kind of gotten, kind of going through some final things that we heard of, just kind of some miscellaneous stuff. We kind of got an official timeline of Star Wars that, for the first time, features the Old Republic. We have Dawn of the Jedi, which, if we get the movie about, we'll feature that era. Old Republic, High Republic, which has all been about the books, and then Acolyte, and then the Young Jedi Adventures show, and then Fall of Jedi, Reign of the Empire, Age of Rebellion, New Republic, Rise of First Order, New Jedi Order. I think that's a solid timeline. I, I like these eras. I want to maybe explore some more of this, and then maybe some more of this, and not so much of this right here but it is what it is um we also got some uh high republic phase 3 information 
Um, I have not caught up with Phase 2. I was I was really on the ball with High Republic Phase 1. Uh, phase 2, not so much. Um, but here's like a list of a bunch of novels that we'll be getting. Um, but Phase 3 is going to begin October of this year, going into Wave and Wave 1 of it, finishing March 2024. So March next year. And it's going to start with one year after the fall of Starlight Beacon. And then Charles Soul will end the High Republic Publishing Initiative in spring 2025. And that'll be end of phase three. I need to catch up on this stuff, but I've been kind of caught up with video stuff at night and whatnot. So I haven't had a chance to read all too much. Um, I've heard that this second phase has been kind of hit and miss. So I don't know how I feel about it. But I mean, if the books are good, I'll read them. Alrighty. And then some final short little news to close this out. Hopefully this video didn't get too long after editing it down. But Lando series is still in the works. It's just Donald Glover's a busy boy. Rogue Squadron could still be released as film or as a series. So that's interesting to hear. Unfortunately, Kenobi season two is not in develop as of right now, which kind of sucks because we don't get Ewan McGregor. But also at the same time, I don't know if I want Kenobi season two because I don't know what they could do. <laughs> they could do like Kenobi training with Qui-Gon and then do like flashbacks and that's how the series goes but I I would love to see more Kenobi but I don't know how we'll see more Kenobi. Uh, Taika Waititi's movie is still in development and then Ryan Johnson's movies are still possible but it's just um he's busy with knives, about, knives Out and other projects but apparently him and Kathleen Kennedy still talk all the time. And going forward, which this wasn't the case for the kind of offshoot movies like Solo and Rogue One, all movies will have opening crawls going forward. Cool. I mean, I really have no preference one way or the other, but crawls are cool as long as they're used right and they don't just start with the dead speak emperor's back. <laughs> but that is it. Look at that. Shout out to Google Slides, dude. I think that's all I have. Um... I'm glad I was finally able to figure out my live stream to work. So now hopefully I can stream a bit more going forward. But um, if you're watching this on YouTube, cut down. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment what you thought of the video and consider subscribing. And I'm hopefully going to get this video out quickly because otherwise the kind of celebration stuff will kind of die down quickly and then I probably won't get any views. <laughs> but either way, thank you for watching. Take care and may the force be with you.